Hello all, Game Methuselah. I've been putting up my miniatures of the day on both uh, YouTube and my Twitter account, and they're getting a lot of positive response. People are interested in seeing my stuff. But one of the biggest interests was in when I put up some of my dungeon set dressing. I have a pretty comprehensive collection of dungeon paraphernalia, you know, bodies and caskets and piles of treasure and chests and statues and pretty much you name it. And I have it been painted by me. It's been painted by Steve, a lot of other things I've accumulated over the years. And, and some of it I just use right out of the box. So what I wanted to do was kind of do a brief video on this, but the reason I did it is I found these chess pieces about a year ago. Um, I can't remember if it was a swap meet or an estate sale, but they basically I picked them up for about a buck. Uh, it was an incomplete set of chess pieces. You know, they didn't really have any value. I think the people would have more likely tossed it if I hadn't have bought it. So I just sort of took it home and I just based two of the ivory statues and kept them in my box eventually, figuring I would use them for statues. But I was looking at them again the other day as I came across them and thought, you know, all these pillars would be very cool. This kind of stuff really adds to the ambiance of your game and really makes your games a lot more interesting. Even if you're playing theater of the mind, it's really nice if they can have a visual reference or they sort of see what the, what the imagery of it looks like. So I did this, I'm gonna to try to compilate it so you can sort of see how you basically take just sort of mundane things that you might pick up at a swap meet or an aquarium shop or you know an estate sale or any place, even a pick and save or a big lots or whatever might have some things on sale that look interesting for you. And the other thing is keep your eye out always for stuff. I mean, there was an old joke years ago with the like legs, eggs. I'm sure none of you remember what they are. You usually toss the eggs away. Well, they made great little geodesic sort of domes for space things. So we always said things like that were perfect for Traveler. This was one of the games we were playing. And that's how it was. We just would find things that were interesting. We'd accumulate it and hold on to it. And at some later point, like I did yesterday, you just whip them out and you start painting them and you got them all ready now, and I wanted to show you how simple it is, but more importantly, I wanted to keep your mind thinking and being open to when you're out there in the world and you go someplace and you find bag o' bugs, pick it up and buy it and stick it in a drawer. You might not use it now, but you never know somewhere down the road, you might need a hundred ants and you're gonna be glad you bought that bag of ants. Here you go, and until we chance to speak again, fight to be devil's fight, for I hate peace. Game on. Well, this here is just one of my painted Greebly miniature collection. As you guys can see, I have lots of things. I have tables, I have barrels, I have piles of treasure. I have wizard's bookcases. I have mimics, I have sarcophagus, I have pillars. I have pretty much everything you could need for junk. Now, this isn't all inclusive. This is just one of my boxes. I think I have at least another one fully painted like this. Not to mention the hundreds and hundreds of unpainted things I have. And that's kind of what I wanted to talk to you about, is building the scene. And I find that to be really important. Because when you want to go in there and there's going to be a giant spider, it's way cool to have a giant pile of treasure that the spider can be lurking under. And leap out of it to attack the party as they go up to a value the great mass of wealth they've just accumulated. And how you do this all on a budget... I've always been envious of all these people online who show you how to paint and they've got these beautiful paint workstations and they just look like they're immaculate with just a little bit of paint on their palette. Where of course, my place looks like a bomb went off. I just have all kinds of miniatures that I'm working on and projects I'm thinking about and they transfer apart. People send me Albear babies and I think, oh my God, I got to paint these. I've got vintage figures from the 70s. I've got... Albion, I've got figures for Tecamil, Empire of the Petal Throne. There's always something that's exciting me, and it always is sitting there waiting and haunting me. Now, admittedly, I've had four decades to collect all this stuff, and I have thousands and thousands of painted miniatures to prove the time and, and energy I put into the hobby. But the neat thing is, when you're setting the stage, as I've just shown you with some of the little greebly I have in boxes, but one thing I want to show you was this. What I was interested in, of course, is these figures for Dungeons and Dragons. Now, these figures were so filthy and dirty that you can see over years and years of just more likely sitting out in somebody's garage for decades, acquired a ton of dirt. So what I did is I 
just left them alone. I thought, well, they're kind of cool little ivory statues. I just painted the pedestal gray. I left the felt on them. I didn't do anything. I tossed them in one of my Greeley boxes, and I have two really cool statues. But it didn't just come with these two figures. It came with almost an entire chess set. Now, what was really interesting is I had Rodin's The Thinker, a you know, recognizable piece of art. But then I thought, well, wait a minute. This screams to be a bronze golem. So someone had already had sort of this metallic finish on it. So I may just keep working on that like that and then just paint the stone piece and it'll look like a golem sitting on a pile of stone. But the best part was this. Now I've been cleaning these now because of course I can't quite leave them alone. You can see some of these are still really filthy after being you know, cleaned and stuff. These were the pawns in the set. And of course, you can imagine being pawns, I have tons of these and they're all great pillars. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically paint them all gray, dry brush and wash them, then basically work maybe a little bit more on the base, but I doubt it. I'll leave it basically stone so it'll all fit in in your dungeon tiles. So now when you're building a dungeon and you want really evocative pillars, you know, or if it's a temple or any place that you're going to, these are here. I think this was the queen. Look at this really unusual pillar and this, you know, statue of Hera. It's very cool. They have the winged victory, another cool statue. Now, so what I'm going to do now is I've just washed all these, repaint them gray. I'll come back and show you. And then I'll start talking to you about how we do the dry brushes and the washes like you've seen, but how to turn mundane things into very cool dungeon paraphernalia and make your games more interesting. So the first thing I'm going to show you is what I'm getting and what I'm starting with. And then as we go, I'll add pieces on, show you the painting and the dry brush until you can see the final effect. I'm basically going to turn them into golems. Now, the one thing I'm going to do is leave this one completely alone. A metalized, patinaed bronze statue. But the white one, obviously, is a problem. I could use it as an ivory statue, but it just looks like a statue and not too interesting. And again, what I really want to do with these is not make them statues, but make them golems. They could be statues. You could still use them for that, of course. And that I did the other day. If you had seen part of my game, they kept trying to mess with this statue because they really thought it was a golem and they were going to try to get it to come to life and do some stuff. Which it could have done, which would have been really, really catastrophic for them since they're not elves and it would not have taken any orders from any of them. But here's this ugly, dirty piece. I cleaned it up as best I can, but it's still pretty crummy. But again, all I do is just take very dark brown, which is the base coat I use. Any sort of gold, you know, crude metal, I use a dark brown underneath. That gives that metal sort of that, that old kind of crude looking forged type look. The more crude and rough sometimes Greebly looks, the kind of better it is. Here's some different colors put on some of the pillars, but all these will eventually sort of blend together. But the reason is whatever base coat you use, is going to be the total quality that you set up for when you do the finished miniatures. Now, again, that may not matter. These miniatures, like I said, could have all just been spray painted and I'm waiting for everything else to dry. So as I work on this, I'll give you a little snippets and you can see how it's a going. standard dry brush, way too much. And as I tell you, when you're slopping on paint, don't worry too much about it. You're going to go back and be able to fix problems that come up. But this is basically it. You know, on the, on the dark gray, I'm going to go ahead and give it a lighter gray dry brush, and then eventually go back and give it a black wash. I assume. Now, I might not really, depending upon, you know, good enough. When you're doing peripheral items like this for your dungeon, you really just want them to look sort of decent. As you can see now, I've got some decent contrast. Um, I don't even really need to do much more than this, just kind of do this all along. More likely no wash at all on the dark. Now, they'll more likely be a little bit more on the gray because there's going to be more factors involved. Now, of course, I've got to now add white in with this gray to get it light enough so you can see any contrast. So I think my final prep work on most of these is going to be doing them like this really dark gray. It sort of matches my dungeon tiles as well, so I'm going to like that. And it's going to be very easy to give it some contrast and make it look kind of cool. And then I can go back and add details as I want to, maybe discolorations with like green for like mold or mildew and, and things like that, which are always kind of fun to have when uh, when you're doing a dungeon. I have uh, dark the, done the dark brown for my Rodan's Thinker. 
And then this one, I, like I said, the black one, I'm just going to leave completely alone because you can sort of see the sheen for the metallic. It has a patina on it, so it's kind of cool. And then I'm just going to paint this portion gray. And that'll be it. When you're doing um, peripheral pieces for your dungeon, don't get carried away. It's really just get them on the table. Because believe me, the minute you put anything, even if it was unpainted ivory or the unpainted black, I mean, no one's going to have anything like this. So you put it down on the table and it's going to be really great. It's when you're just doing terrain and stuff, remember the idea is to not make these your Golden Demon Award winners. We just want to put out some pizzazz that when the players see it, they're gonna be really kind of impressed that you've gone to this much effort. But now it works good with the dungeon tiles, it works everything else, but truthfully, I've often found that the best reason to have all this dungeon paraphernalia is if you don't have those things. If you're just working on a dry erase board or just any kind of mats, when you put stuff like this down, it sort of brings the imagination part of it to life. So people can really kind of maybe visually see what you're going for. Go look around. You'd be amazed how often I find all kinds of really interesting things. Little statues that are Egyptian and things that are all really kind of much more scaled to Dungeons and & Dragons and other role-playing games than they are to sitting on your coffee table. So morning has come and things have dried and I've spent virtually no time and I've gotten quite a bit done. So I painted light gray and then washed them with black. These two pillars I painted dark gray and then just dry brushed them with light gray. This pillar was actually the black. All I did was dry brush that with light gray and that was it. So it becomes the easiest of all to do. And I think the best thing to do is do things that are fast and you can get the items on the board without a lot of expenditure of time because these are not monumental pieces that people are going to look at all the time like a player character. On this stuff, you just wanna get it done quickly. On the ivory pieces, which is the base color of the plastic, this dirt has formed that really is as good of shading as pretty much anything I would do. The thing is, it's done. No time. I just put a little gray on the base, a little gray on the top, a little dry brush and wash, and this piece is finished. Now, I just painted the bottom gray part stone gray so that you end up with Rodin's famous man on toilet, and it works really nice for like an interesting statue or, in this case, uh, a golem, which I think would be great. Now, I've prepped these up for rub and bun. The nice thing about all of this is the amount of work not required. There's lots of very cool things you can acquire for virtually no money that can really add to the detail of your game. And that's where I think um, the Greebly has a lot of value because they're going to suddenly add a level of dimension and detail that nothing that you draw on the map is going to really do. And I think this adds to the value of your game and the interest level that I think your players are going to get. The rub and buff, as you guys have seen before, is just the material I use. It's a, it's a clay paste material that is metallic. It's been around forever. I've been using this since the early, early 70s. And then you just start with it. Now, this one is going to be substantially brighter than the other one because I'm using gold. And I kind of want that to be the case. I want to set it up so this golem could be different than the other one. Then, Or if it's nothing else, just the statue can be different. So you'll have this sort of maybe gold statue. And of course, the way rub and buff works, as I've told you, is it starts out, you put it on very slightly, and you just sort of rub it in. And if you just rub it lightly, you're going to end up with just the highlights, and it's not going to be very bright. But the longer you stay at it, and if you could stay at it for a period of time, it's going to really brighten up and become a lot more metallic and a lot more of whatever that color is, either silver or gold or bronze or copper or whatever color you use. So with less brush time than it would take me to speed paint a miniature, I turned this missing chess set, unwanted with lost pieces, into some pretty creative stuff. You'll see that the wing victories, both in the stone, which I painted on the black one, and then I left the ivory, which is actually the color of the plastics, all alone, like I had stated before, because it was so dirty. They really looked really old and washed. It was very cool. The urn and the other thinker, I rub and buffed. One, I left the color of the black material, which was, again, sort of a metallic copper. And that would be perfect. Just painted the gray, did a little wash. And in less than an actual hour of my time, the rest was all basically spent uh, waiting for things to dry, I've been able to whip up a bunch of really cool little dungeon paraphernalia for upcoming adventures. Now, 
I really like the ease of the black. I'm going to go ahead and leave all the black pillars that I have back there that are all sort of chipped up. I'm just going to dry brush them gray. And then the sand ones, I'm going to leave exactly alone. And then I'm just going to mount sand on their bases. So they look like little Egyptian ruins or something you would find out in the desert. And I've got some other pieces lying around that I'll add to that. So I'll make a nice little vignette. Always keep an eye out for interesting little things that you can use for your game. And then go out and try to find some Greebly. If you get anything interesting, show me. I'd love to see what you're finding. So until I have a chance to speak again, fight me, devils, fight. For I hate peace. Paint on.